Hey guys, today we are in Acts chapter 10. Yesterday we left off with Peter, um, who was staying with Simon the Tanner um, in Joppa, which is on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And today we see that at Caesarea, which is also on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion who was known as the Italian cohort. Um, not much to be said here. The Italian cohort um, is a group of soldiers uh, that were kind of known as the most loyal um, of soldiers to Rome. Um, there was 32 of these cohorts throughout throughout kind of the whole world. Um, but the, these were kind of like... Um, we almost say like the um, like the Navy SEALs or like the Rangers. They are like the most dedicated um, parts of the Roman army, right? So here, one of the leaders, um, Cornelius, but he was also a devout man who feared God with his household. Now, you see that line that says feared God? Um, you'll see this sometimes. Uh, in the New Testament, that Jews, especially in the Gospels, will refer to them as God-fearers. Um, basically, these were Gentiles, um, who, of course, they were they were Romans. They were around all kinds of idols and fake gods, but um, they worshipped, they chose to worship, and only worshipped uh, the God of Israel, Yahweh, right? So, uh, they feared God, but they were not Jewish, okay? Uh, so he's a Gentile, but he worships, he worships Yahweh, worships God. Um, and not only did he worship him, he gave alms generously, he prayed, continue. And then one day, about the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m., um, he saw clearly a vision of an angel came to him, um, and we see that in verse 4, he was in terror, much like all the other um, stories of a person seeing an angel. Um, uh, come to him, and basically he said, hey, there's a guy staying in Joppa. His name is Simon Peter. You need to get him to come here, right? So what's interesting is that God uses this angel to tell him to bring Peter um, because Peter is going to bring the good news, right? Um, it's just interesting, and then all the other times that we see angels um, up to this point, we see that angels are the one that brings the good news, right? But here, uh, the angel tells him to bring Peter, and Peter, Peter is going to bring the gospel, the good news, right? So um, it, it's just a, just a little interesting thing as you read. Um, and so he's there, he's staying at a guy's house named Simon the Tanner, right? So the angel gives him all these specifics at where he's at. And so it said that he sent his, uh, sent some soldiers, uh, to Joppa to get this man. Now the next day, um, as the soldiers were on their way, we see that Peter, who is in Joppa at Simon the Tanner's house, uh, he is praying about noon. Right. Notice this. I love this verse. Verse 10. And he became hungry. You thought it was just you that when you pray, you become hungry. Right. It, it, it's I, I'm telling you, it's a little bit of spiritual warfare. Right. It's our human flesh um, when we're trying to be godly. Uh, I think I think there's a little part of our sinfulness um, that tries to distract us. Right. It tries to pull us away. Um, from that communication with God. But he's praying. He's hungry. It's noon, right? Uh, he wanted something to eat. And it says he fell into a trance. Um, it, you don't have to look much into this. Uh, you know, there's a vision. Um, we see God communicate in a lot of different ways to a lot of different people. Um, so basically, he sees a vision, right? And what is this division? It says it's like a great sheet, like a cloth. It's descending um, four corners are being kind of held, um, and so um, that's just encompassing. We see this a lot of talk, like in Revelation, just meaning all the four corners of the world, like a map, the edges, right? So all of the animals um, are descending. All kinds of the animals, reptiles, and birds of the air are in that. And a voice came to him, and it said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Um, and this is interesting, right? Because it's not just kosher animals. It's not just 
animals that the Old Testament law says is good, but there's reptiles and there's uh, there's birds. And so many, many of these animals uh, were not kosher. But here, um, this voice, God tells him to kill and to eat. Peter said, by no means. He says, no way. If you remember the Gospels, Peter's got a track record of telling God no. <laughs> he just does, right? God says, do this. And he says, no, by no means. I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, that word common just means impure or holy. It doesn't mean like it's just commonly found, okay? So it's just common, just not holy. Um, remember, the word holy, hagios, means to set apart or special, right? Um, and, and so here he says, I have never eaten anything that's common or unclean. And the voice came and said the second time, you know, hey, you need to do this. What God has made clean, do not call common, impure, or holy. What God has said is clean, let it be clean. This happened three times. Peter and the threes, right? The deny three. Jesus asked him, does he love him three? I mean, we can just see that. You just see this. This is who Peter is. He's 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 like me. He needs, he needs multiple times uh, to, to get the picture, right? While Peter was inwardly perplexed, he's thinking about what this vision means, uh, what happens. Uh, there's some men who come. Uh, Simon's house stood at the gate. Simon called on Peter and said, hey, there's some guys here. Um, and in uh, the Spirit, Holy Spirit told Peter, behold, three men are looking for you. Arise and go down and accompany, accompany them without hesitation, right? So he's thinking about what this vision means. The Holy Spirit says, hey, there's some men at the door. You need to go with them. Don't hesitate. Don't do your normal thing that Peter does, right? Don't hesitate. I have sent them for you. Do what they say. Peter went down and said, hey, what's going on? And they say, Cornelius, a centurion. Now remember, a centurion uh, is a part of the Roman army, right? We've already discussed that, right? But Peter is a Jew. Remember, Jews hate Rome. Rome is oppressing Israel. They are the owners of Israel. They are the reason um, that they are not number one. They are the reason that the Messiah, they need the Messiah to save them uh, from Rome. That's what they think, right? So uh, this idea of says, hey, there's a centurion and he wants you to come to his house. This is kind of like somebody coming and telling you, you need to go to the person that you hate and loathe the most on this planet right? Who is that? And God says, hey, you need to go with them without question. So what happened? Verse 23, so he invited them to be his guests. The next day, um, they rose and they went with them. Um, and they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them. When Peter entered, um, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet, right? So Cornelius doesn't know who Peter is, okay? Um, he, he's, he, he's kind of out of the district. He, he's not, he doesn't know the disciples. He doesn't know all this. He just knows that this angel sent for him. So he's from God. He's got to be special. He's got to be holy. This is what God wants him to do, right? But what happens? Peter lifted him up and said, I too am in a man. It's not right for Cornelius to worship Peter. And it's not right for Peter to accept that worship. Okay. Um, so that's, everything is good right now. Um, but verse 27, inter, this is, it's, it's neat. We just read over it, just but it's great. And he talked with him. Notice these next words. He went in. A Jewish man went into a Gentile, a Roman Gentile at that, a Roman Gentile's house. That doesn't happen ever because that would ceremonial make the Jew unclean. Uh, that he would have to go to the temple. He would have to do uh, some ceremony washing. He would have to do some things that the priest wanted him to do, right? So that would was not be allowed. But what does Peter do? He goes in and he finds many get persons gathered, many Gentiles, right? This is all Cornelius' friends and family. And he said to them, you know yourselves, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or visit anyone of another nation. But, I circled it in my Bible, but, right? You know what the world says, but 
God says different. God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. Peter understood what the sheet was about, right? Remember it says that he was inwardly perplexed. He's thinking about this. Now he's thought about it. The spirit has illuminated to him and now he understands. It's not just about food. It's not just about um, just eating whatever you want. It was about the message of Jesus, okay? It's not just for the Jews anymore. Now it is for the Gentiles. Let nothing that I have said is good say that it is bad, right? So he says, so um, when I was sent for him, I came without objection and I asked then why you sent for me. And Cor Cornelius kind of told him, right? Oh, four days ago, an angel came, said this, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and so now you're here and I want you to tell us what, what God wants you to tell us, right? And then in verse 34, we get kind of a, a shortened version uh, you know, it, it's really not shortened, um, but we get the gospel, right? It's shortened than Stephen's. It's shortened than what Peter preached to um, the Sanhedrin. Um, but it, it, it's a great illustration of the gospel. And so Peter just tells them about the gospel. Understand that God shows no partiality, no no difference between Jews and Gentiles. Um, and then he just goes right into it, right? He says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth that Jesus is God, that they hung him on a tree, uh, that he, they buried him. He was raised on the third day. So we, Jesus is God. He was crucified. He was buried. He was resurrected. Um, and you need to believe in him for the forgiveness of your sins, right? So this is the simple gospel. But notice verse 44, while Peter was still saying these things, while Peter was still preaching, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. It wasn't when the sermon was done. It wasn't when the altar call happened. It wasn't when he said, you know, as the hundreds come forward, as Billy Graham used to say, right? Um, it was as they understood, as they believed in Jesus, man, the Holy Spirit started to pour out on them, started to drop on them. It was at the moment of belief that the Holy Spirit came upon them. Um. And the believers from all, from among the circumcised, from the believers that Peter brought, right, that were Jewish, who had come with Peter, were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. They have only seen this on Jewish people, right? Um, these, 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 um, these Jews probably did not go to Samaria. Um, when Peter and John went, okay? So they haven't seen this. They've only seen the Holy Spirit pour down Jews and they're amazed, right? And how, how did they know? For when they, for they were hearing them speaking in tongues like the apostles, right? Remember, glossia, languages. They're not just babbling. They're speaking languages and they're speaking languages. How do they know that they're speaking languages? Because they understand what they're saying, Speaking in language because they were what? Extolling God. They were praising God. They were glorifying God in other languages on the earth. Not just babbling uh, like some people believe today. It was true languages and true glorification of God in those languages. Okay. Um, and Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing? And he commanded them to be baptized. They believed. They received the Holy Spirit. They were baptized. That's the biblical mandate. That's what we do. Um, then he asked them, uh, then they, then they, right, the, the Gentile believers, right, they asked Peter um, to remain with them for some days. They, they wanted more than the gospel, right? They, they wanted some teaching. They wanted some discipleship. They got the they got they got the gospel and they believe now they wanted more, right? True conversion, true conversion will always give evidence of Holy Spirit and will always give evidence for wanting more of God's word. It's just how it is. If God saved you, you will have evidence of the fruit of the Spirit, and you will have evidence of for the love and the hunger of God's word. If you're a Christian and you, you don't hunger for the word of God, you don't thirst for the word of God, I'm not saying that you're not a Christian, but I'm saying, man, there are some things messed up in your life. 
Um, the Holy Spirit hungers for the word of God. That's how the Holy Spirit teaches you how to go um, through your through this life, through this world. Um, and it is through the words of Scripture, it's through the words of God that the Holy Spirit uses in our heart to teach us and to guide us in how we shall live today. So we will always have those things, evidence of Holy Spirit, evidence for the hungering and thirsting of God's word. Do you have those things? Hope you do. Hey, uh, that's the end of chapter 10. I hope that makes sense um, as we see Peter moving forward. And we will see you tomorrow in chapter 11 as Peter continues on to share the gospel. See you. God bless.